Hi, welcome to Moomoo Math. Today we're going to look at conditional probabilities from tables. And this is lesson four of this probability unit. So conditional probabilities, first let's define what a conditional probability is. Conditional probability um, is, in theory, is um, a conditional probability measures the probability of an event given by assuming presumption, assertion, or evidence another event occurs. So to me, I think of this as it's kind of like taking a subgroup and that's how you look at conditional probabilities. A condition occurs, a condition occurs that then results in a different probability. There is a formula and I'm going to show it to you. It's the probability of A given B. So event B had to occur, that's the condition and we're finding the probability of A given the subgroup B. And here's our formula. Now, I don't really use a formula, but you can if you want. So I'm just going to show you um, how to do this more just by using the tables today. Okay, so let's start off on our note-taking guide with this situation. We've got find the probability that you're choosing a small marble because we have marbles in a bag. Okay, well, finding the probability of small, we just add up, well, we don't care what color they are. We just want to know how many small ones. We have 20 small ones out of 26. So that's 20 out of 26, which reduces to 10 thirteenths. So that would be our probability that we would choose a small marble. Okay, now the second one is actually given a condition. So find the probability of green given large. So now we're looking at the subgroup the large ones. Well, how many large ones do we have? We only have six. So out of those six, how many are green? Two are green. So it would be two out of six because we're looking at the subgroup as our denominator and the numerator is that subgroup's green, right? So that would be one-third. So given that we were looking at a lar all the larges, how many are green? Okay, so do you see how it's a subgroup here? Okay, so let's look at a few more examples here. A town planning committee is considering a new system for public transit. Residents of the town are randomly selected to answer two questions. Do you work less than five miles from home? Would you use the new system to get to work? If it were available, the results are shown in the table. So we've got, yes, they live more than five miles away from home or less than five. So these are people that live less than five miles away. These are people that live more than five miles away. And yes, they're gonna use this system and no, they're not gonna use this system. Okay, let's look at the first question. If residents work less than five miles from home, what's the probability that you, they'll use the new system? So we're looking at a subgroup. The condition is they work less than five miles from home. So we're looking at this column only. So let's isolate this column and add this up. That's going to give us eight, 68 people. 68 people in the survey list work less than five miles from home. What's the probability of that group that they would use the new system? So using the system, you have 24 out of 68. 24 out of 68 which reduces to what? Divide by 2, which would be 12 out of 34. Divide by 2 again, and that's 6 out of 17. So 6 seventeenths would be our answer. Okay, so again, this is my condition. So if I were to write this as a probability, I would do probability, and the condition is less than 5, right? five miles. And what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the probability that they are yes. Okay. Yes, that they will um, use the transit system. So that's how the probability would be set up if you wrote it as a statement, a probability statement. So now let's look at it. this one. If residents are willing to use the system, so now we're looking at the subgroup. They want to use the new system. So that's this subgroup. So now we're looking at this row instead of a column. So that's going to give us, what, 56? So what's the probability that they don't work less than 5 miles from home? So they're no's. 
Okay, they don't work. So that's 32 out of our subgroup, which is 56. That reduces by, what, 4. So that's going to give us 8 out of 56. Is that 14? 56 divided by 4. Yeah, 14. And it reduces again by 2, which would give us 4 sevenths. Okay, so that one is just the probability is 4 sevenths. Okay, so that, that's where we'll, you've got it more in words. Okay, let's try a couple more of these. Uh, the table shows the results of a poll of randomly selected high school students who were asked if they prefer to hear all the announcements in the morning. So underclassmen, upperclassmen, morning or afternoon. Like, do they like the announcements in the morning or do they like the announcements in the afternoon? Okay, so find the probability that an underclassman, given underclassman, they prefer the morning. So let's look at the underclassmen. Let's add up underclassmen. That adds up to 26. So out of those 26, how many prefer the morning? Eight. So that's going to reduce to four out of 13. Four thirteenths. And what's the probability uh, that your upperclassmen prefer the afternoon? So upperclassmen, we have 24. How many prefer the afternoon? 10. So 10 out of 24, which is 5 twelfths. Okay, so that one was fairly easy just to using another condition. Okay, let's look at these. Okay, now we're given three so it's a little more involved. The table shows the results of a customer satisfaction survey for a self-service provider by location of the customer. In the survey, customers were asked whether they would recommend a plan with a provider to a friend. So you've got three different providers, Arlington, Townsend, and Parkville, and are they gonna recommend this service? Okay, so and you've got different numbers of people, so it helps define which was actually the best one. Um, so how many are just, what's the probability that yes, they would recommend the carrier? Well, this one's not given a condition, so we need to know how many yeses there are. So let's, let's do our columns and rows and get our totals. Let's see, we're going to start off with, let's see, 40 plus 35 plus 41. Okay, that's 116 people are yeses. How many are noes? 18 and 10 and 6. So 34 are noes. So how many is that total? That looks like it's 150 people. So what, what's the probability that yes, you would recommend it? Well, 116 out of 150. Okay, and that's going to reduce. Let's use our little calculator button just to reduce it. So we do 116 divided by 150, and we get our decimal, and then we want to switch it back to a reduced fraction. So math, 1, reduces it back to 58 over 75. So we can only divide by 2. So that's our probability. Okay, um, now let's look, find the probability that they said yes, but given only Arlington, oh, okay, so now we're only looking at one column. Okay, we're only looking at this group. So out of the Arlington people, what's our total? 58. 58 people surveyed used Arlington, so what's the probability that they would recommend them? 40 out of 58. And let's do 40 divided by 58. Get our decimal and then math one. And that gives us 20 out of 29. Now, are these the same? Are the two probabilities the same? No. Why not? They're not because we were given a condition of Arlington. We only looked at that group. So can we tell if it's better than the average? So is it better than the other two combined? Well, let's just compare the decimals. So if I take 58 divided by 75, and I get this decimal, uh, 0.773% would recommend the cut the their carrier. So how does Arlington compare to the other two? Well, Arlington is only at 0.689, so they're below the other two. So they're not the best one. That's how you would compare and see. 
Okay, so if you have to do any type of comparison, that's what you're going to do. Okay, let's look at the next one. Roberto is the owner of a car dealership. He is assessing the success rates of his top three salespeople in order to offer them a promotion. Over two months for each at a sales attempt, attempted sales, he records whether the salesperson made a successful sale or not. The results are shown in the chart below. Okay, let's look at the probability that Becky was successful. So we're only looking at Becky. Okay, Becky had how many possible sales? She had 12. Well, how many of those were successes? Six were successful. So she is at a half. She's only batting 50%. She's not that great. But she's actually not doing too poorly. You actually have to compare it to the other two. How about Daryl? Now let's look at Daryl's sales. He had 15 attempts. So how many were unsuccessful? Nine out of 15 were unsuccessful. So that reduces to three-fifths. So he was only successful two-fifths of the time. And then look at, let's look at Raul. Uh, Raul. Raul was only successful four out of nine, so he's less than 50%. So who's the best salesperson? Becky is going to end up being the best salesperson because she has, in proportion, she's more successful. Okay, let's look at the last one. Mrs. Culler surveyed 430 men and 200 women about their vehicles. Of those surveys, 160 were men and 85 women said they own a blue vehicle. So now what we need to do is take that information and fill all this in. So let's see. We have 430 total men. So that's going to be my total over here. We have 200 women. That's my total here. So how many were surveyed? 630 were surveyed. Okay, of those, 160 men said they had blue, so there's 160 here, and 85 had of the women had blue. So how many don't have blue? Well, let's take that. Let's take 430 men and subtract 160, and that gives us with 270 did not have blue. And then 200 minus 85 is 115. 115 women didn't have blue. So let's add the totals up. Make sure you always want to make sure these match. 5 or 243 or 245. And then this is going to be 5, 8, and 3. And then do these add up. 245 plus 385. 630. Yep, I just like to make sure these all match. Okay, now we can answer the questions. If a randomly selected person is a man, so what's our condition? Men are our condition, so we're only looking at that row. What's the probability that a person ha has a blue car? Well, out of the men, blue would be 160 out of one, uh, 430, and that cross that divide by 10, and that gives me 16 out of 43. So that would be the probability. Okay, what's the probability of not blue, of blue and then the, the not symbol? So not blue, not blue is two, uh, 385, and there's not a condition, so we're just taking that out of the hole. So 385 out of 630, so let's divide that and just reduce it. 385 divided by 630, math, fraction. 11 eighteenths. Ooh, that was a lot easier than trying to reduce that one, wasn't it? 11 eighteenths. Okay, probability that given they don't like blue, they're women. So how many don't like blue? We're only looking at the not blue column. So 385 is my denominator. They were women, 115. So 115 out of 385. 115 out of 385, and then math, fraction, 23 out of 77. And, oh, this one's a little bit different. Men intersect, not blue. Okay, so remember the Venn diagrams we did before? So all the men, and then all the not blues. 
where do those two circles intersect? They intersect right here. 270 out of 630 out of the whole thing. So 270 divided by 630 is 3 sevenths. There you go. So hopefully this video was helpful on figuring out how to handle conditional probabilities from tables.